Penn State Conversations is a podcast produced by the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications. Episode topics range from the people, programs, and events that shape the Belisario College to discussing key aspects of life in the professional world for young and upcoming communications alumni. Please enjoy this episode of Penn State Conversations. On this episode of Conversations, we have Dean Marie Harden of the Belisario College sitting down with Donald P. Belisario to discuss his writing process, advice for young writers, and his latest project entitled Spitfire. Okay, so I want to dive right into um, your current project, and I want to uh, learn more about it, but I also want, if you don't mind, for you to talk about sort of the ways that you're applying some of the things that we've talked about in terms of great writing to that current project. So first of all, can you tell us about it? Yeah, the project I'm working on now is called Spitfire. And uh, it takes place in uh, June of 1944 in uh, France during the war. And it involves a uh, American uh, Spitfire American pilot. He was, he's not a Spitfire pilot. He's a Mustang. But he's, uh, uh, his name is Thomas Brittle, which is my homage to John Wayne. He has, uh, one of his characters was named Brittle. Ah. So I love that. Okay. So reaching back in to pull something out of popular culture. Right. right? Right, yep. and uh, it 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 starts um, with him being shot down. <laughs> wow. Okay. Starts, starts with him being shot down over France and being rescued, but it's uh, he's rescued by a female Spitfire pilot. Mm, okay. That gets him into finding this unit, which is all females. Wow. All right. Spitfires. And it's, uh, there was units like this. A lot, there were a lot of female pilots during the war. They were usually mostly ferrying aircraft, but some of them got into combat. And that got me started on the story idea. So mm -hmm. I just took it from there. I wrote the opening two pages, which were the best two pages of the whole script. <laughs> And um, it should be the last two pages that are the best, but mine was the first two pages to hook the audience in. And so far, it's done that. Anybody who's read the script got hooked into it. Well, I was very fortunate to get to read that script. And yes, it is a page turner from start to finish. And actually, um, I love the first two pages, but I got to tell you, the last. To me, the last page has this incredible surprise that I think is just so brilliant. So I would tell you that I think you did a fine job on that last two pages of the script too, Don. But well, anyway. I always have a big surprise at the end of what I write. It's kind of a a hallmark for me to do that. This one, this one has it, I think. So it's always great. So. Um, a couple of things I wanted to ask you about, just in what you've just said. It sounds to me as though, you know, you've been a student of World War II history, at least to a degree, to be able to even come up with the original idea for this story, right? Well, I was, you got to remember, I was a young boy. I was like six, seven years old during World War II, and that made a huge impression on me because the town I'm from was a small town and everybody went off to war, came back. My dad had a, uh, had a, uh, uh, a number of photographs. Everybody brought, sent their photo to my dad and he put them up on the wall. And then there was a bowl, which all the postcards from everyone went into. So anybody that came into my dad's bar could read the latest postcards from the guys overseas, see their pictures on the wall. 
And it, that made a big impression on me. And of course, I followed the war really close. I read everything I could read about it. And it gave me a, a good knowledge, general knowledge of the war. Did that influence, is that the reason that you have so much in terms of just sort of military themes in your, in a lot of your writing, really? Probably. Yeah, I would say so, because it made, made such an impression on me. You know, you're seven years old, and all this is happening, this huge world event. And it, it makes a big impression. And I, I read every story I could read. I read books on it. And when the war was over, I still continued to read all the stories that came out. And I think that's so important because, you know, we, the idea, you know, you have these original ideas that then you develop and you integrate these surprises and, and, and create these wonderful stories. But you've got a base to build from, which is your personal journey and also everything that you've read. So it's not sort of coming completely out of thin air, right? And what I saw, uh, all the films that I saw, which mm, were, of course, just, just tons of film. And so I have all the films, I had all the books, all the writing, newspaper articles, magazine articles. I, I absorbed it all. So one of the things you talked about was, you know, this pilot at the beginning, that essentially you have a, a male pilot who crashed, who, you know, essentially right. needs to be rescued. And it's a female pilot who rescues him, which m leads me to ask you, does every great story need a love story embedded in it? <laughs> It helps. <laughs> it helps. Um, I don't know that it's necessary, but it, it does help. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's it attracts it attracts people to the story, right? Right. They get Pull into it. Through it. People interacting in a love story. Yeah. Um, so Spitfire has. Um, it, I mean, it's, it has all of these elements. It has the love story. It has um, adventure. It has danger. It has surprises. It has friendship. It has, I guess my question for you is, you've packed a lot in the script. Um, talk a little bit about what you enjoy, you know, what are the threads you enjoy pulling through a script like this? It's, it's strange with me because it comes from uh, just my general knowledge and feelings and attitude towards things. I don't do a lot of research. I, I have done research, but for example, in Spitfire, I didn't do any research. I knew all of it. I knew the aircraft. I knew where they flew uh, and uh, the stories about them. So. I was able to just sit down and just pull that out of my memory. And it, it just, just came out. See, now that's interesting that you say pull it out of your memory. Mm -hmm. Because you were writing an original story. Right. But did it feel as though you were literally pulling the story out of your memory like it had yes. already happened? Yes. Yes. I felt like it was really happening. And I was just transcribing it. Okay, Don, I have to tell you. So that sounds like a magical process. And I don't know how we can teach students what you were just describing. You can. <laughs> you can. They, they either have that process or they don't. And okay. uh, thank God enough of them have it that they can succeed at it. Yeah. And it's teaching them how to listen, I guess, to really to that, pro you know, to pay attention to that process, to, to refine it, to learn how to rewrite. And I guess a question I would have for you on the Spitfire script is, 
How much rewriting did you do? Did you at some point change it at all? No, I didn't change it all, but every page is, is, has rewriting in it. Uh, writing is rewriting. Uh, I really believe that. You don't just sit down and write something out and it comes out perfect. You have to go back and rewrite it and rewrite it. And then it hopefully comes out pretty close to perfect. So this was a story that, um, you know, wasn't one of those, you know, you've talked about where you might start intend to go this way and then you end up going a different way. This um, in the rewriting process. But what you're saying here is with this particular script, you were maybe rewriting the details, but you knew where that story was headed. Fair to say? Uh, you know, I honestly didn't. Uh, uh, I just wrote it and it came out. And the story, I just let the story come out, which is one of the reasons I enjoy writing so much because. I'm being entertained by the story in the same way a reader is. Or a film, someone watching a film is entertained by it because it's developing and I'm seeing it happen for the first time. So it's very rewarding. But you've also talked about this idea that um, getting started if I remember correctly, you've talked about the idea that getting started can be pretty tough. You know, when yeah. you first sort of sit down and, and try to get going. Um, so you said the two, you know, the first two pages in your mind were sort of the best pages for the reader. Were those the toughest two pages to write of the script? No, those were probably the easiest. <laughs> they, um, they came out, they just flowed out. And then the script got tougher as I went in. The script always gets tough in the, in the second and third act. Uh, the first act you can write out fairly well, pretty easily. And the conclusion of the last act you can write out fairly easily. It's that in between that you gotta fill up and keep interesting. And that's hard. So what do you do about writer's block? And I should have asked you about this generally, and I didn't, but maybe you can talk about, it, it, did you get writer's block at any point with Spitfire? No, you know, I've never experienced writer's block. Wasn't that something? Yeah. I know it exists, I know it exists but I've never truly experienced it. Uh, I've always found something coming next. Part of the way I write might have something to do with that. I, I, never, I, mean, I think I said this before, when I'm writing a scene, say I'm writing today and I'm into a scene and it's going to be the last scene I write for the day. I don't write to the end of the scene. I write to the middle of the scene so that when I come back tomorrow, I have some place to flow from, get right back into it. And the flow gets going again. And that scene leads to another scene, leads to another one. And um, that for me is a key to writing, is to always stop before you're finished so that when you come back, you slide right into it again. Where did you learn that? <laughs> I mean, that, that, it wasn't taught. A, okay. I wasn't taught it. Because that technique sounds as though it would, would be a very powerful one because you're allowing the script, when you sit back down, you're allowing the script really kind of carry you back into the story and the sort of right. the rush of energy comes right back to you, right? Right. Um, I just uh, discovered that in writing. Well, I think that's a technique that, students and aspiring writers can start practicing right away, it seems. Yeah, they could. That, that would, it's a good technique. I know the technique works and it works well. And uh, I would advise any young writer to try it. So um, what is the longest, when you were writing the Spitfire script, how long did, 
what's the longest stretch for which you would step away from it? A week? No. Okay. No. When I'm writing and I'm really into it, I just keep going. I might step away for a day, but that would be about it. Because I'm anxious to get the story out. And I'm anxious to discover what's going to happen next. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's like you dive in and you're, you're, it's almost like you're down the rabbit hole. Right. Until right. it's done. Right. Okay. So something else we talked about was you talked about taking this script and turning it into a novel. Is that something you're still? Yeah, that's something I'm doing right now, and it's a totally new experience for me. Um, since I spoke with you, I haven't done anything further on it, but I have to get back into it. It's um, it's a it's a little bit different because um, I start changing the story as I write. I've got it all written out, but I start to change it a little bit. It, it makes and sense it, to it, me. Good for a while now. Yeah, it, when you talk about the way that you write scripts and the fact that you've sort of you've got this story that needs to come out, right? It makes sense to me that you would struggle moving that script to a novel because the story's already out. Right. <laughs> No, it's, a different, uh, it's a different process for me, and I haven't, um, I haven't worked it all out yet. I'm just in the throes of doing it, so it's not worked out. But it's, it's, um, it's just as rewarding, surprisingly. Um, and the story. Go ahead. The story may change. I would imagine it would, right? Because it's uh, part of the creative process for you is would not be sort of just translating, translating right. straight script to novel. It would be generating a, letting a new story come out, I would assume. In well, some I, also, ways. I also don't like writing the same thing over. So I have a tendency to write something different. Now, it may not be much different, or it may be quite different. I'm not sure yet. I'll know when I experience it. So talk a little bit about the differences that you, you imagine will, not specific differences, but what you'll have to do to translate at least some elements of this script to a novel format. Is it rethinking sort of fleshing out the characters more is it trying to get into their inner life more i think i think the characters would need to be fleshed out more yes because you leave a lot of what you're doing in a film to the actors to bring to the film so i need to bring that to a novel so there'll be much more uh, into the character much more explanation about the character and what it's like and what he's thinking and doing. Um, and that probably would go for the whole uh, story. It'd be fleshed out quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And just, um, I think about the characters in the Spitfire script. Um, I love the heroine uh, that we're introduced to at the very beginning. Right. Um, and then, uh, also obviously the pilot and, um, I don't want to give away too much about this, but it, it's got some really rich, there's some really rich characters there who I think, uh, just, just learning about their, just their inner lives and their history, um, I think would be really fun to read. Well, putting, um, a lot of female characters in was uh that's a little different for a quote war novel unquote um because they are essential to the novel and there's a lot of them 
and there's not that many male characters. Mm -hmm. Thomas yep. Riddle, the lead, yep. and you've got a couple of others, but the women are uh, almost in some ways more important. Is it harder for you to write about female characters than male characters or not? No. I don't know that I, that means I write them as well, but uh, no, it wasn't harder. Okay. I just give them shorter hair, I mean, longer hair. <laughs> In my head, I see them. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you certainly but, make the female characters uh, incredibly resilient and strong. When you, you, another thing that's interesting is when I'm writing, uh, I see the the scene you actually see it in your head as you're writing as you'd expect um it's not just words going down so it's it's like i am making the film as i'm writing it so that would be a sort of a different process if you're thinking in terms of a novel or or maybe not no, I think it'd be about the same. Uh, All right. Just, uh, it'll be more detailed, more introspective mm -hmm. with the characters. Yep. Uh, I might add characters, subtract characters, I don't know, until I write it. Yep. That's wonderful. Any ex any uh, advice that you'd give writers based on this most recent project? Any what? I'm sorry, I Ad missed that. Advice? Any advice that you would give aspiring writers based on this most recent project? Uh, wow! Uh, just that when you start a story you don't have to worry about having an ending you don't have to worry about where it's going you can you can have that all set up in your head if you want but you don't need it you can discover the story as you write it which i don't know if that makes it better or worse but uh, that's what i do with all my writing i discover the story as i write it i, I don't sit down with the story in my head. I might have an ending that I want to reach, you know, mm -hmm. and I'll write to get there, but sometimes not. Sometimes I just write. Well, I would, um, based on this most recent project of yours, I would have I would have one thing that I would tell our students and aspiring young writers and that is this once a writer always a writer <laughs> that's true right since you were a boy and you've never deviated from that passion no i think so, a writer or i think you're born a writer it's not something that you go out and decide oh i'm going to be a writer and you learn to be a writer you're it from the beginning. Now you can develop it, you can improve it, you can learn as you write, but you got to be born a writer. And apparently, it that that part of your identity never goes away. So you might as well keep pulling that thread, right? Right. <laughs> Pull that wagon. <laughs> Well, thank you for doing this. I was, I am glad to. This has been fun. So, and it's just always great to see you. I wanted so. to tell students uh, this process that I went through on this particular script because yeah. it's typical of what they'll experience. Yeah, I think that's great. I really appreciate you sharing that. And it is a fabulous script and and it's so funny to hear you say that you think the first two pages 
the first two pages are, they really pulled me in, but that, those last two pages, especially the very end of that script was just so incredibly brilliant. It was ingenious. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Tell them what that is. And it made me very curious. Uh, honestly, the, the end of that script made me really curious about that part of the war and that uh, about Hitler at that time. And I actually went back and did a little research and reading about right. it. Right. So, well, the Hitler so, uh, was uh, made up on the fly. Uh, but uh, who knows? It could have happened like that. I thought it was so clever. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, Don. Let's talk again soon, okay? We'll do it. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Tell me if I said hello. And pat the dogs for me. She's gone. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, All right. Have a good evening. You too. See ya. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Penn State Conversations. For more information about the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications, including the latest news and upcoming events, visit belisario.psu.edu or find us on social media at PSU Belisario on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.